Here for the Daily Examiner and also my own show. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. Tonight is actually quite important. We've been hearing many, many reports of adverse reactions. The fact that the media seem to be, I don't know about suppressing, but definitely not really talking about the adverse reactions so much. We've also had reports from MedSafe as well admitting that they are under-reporting some of the adverse reactions that are out there and this of course came straight after the Pfizer release that was forced upon them by a judge who said instead of actually waiting for 55 years or, or two generations that they had to actually release their documents so we know a lot of things have been going on thank you very much for already some of those comments that are starting to come through please know if you'd like to we are on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube if you wish to share away, absolutely share some of this information around, share the page around. I do apologize, this was supposed to be on the Daily Examiner, but <laughs> tech issues, tech issues. So we didn't have some of that already. Sienna, thank you so much. Happy holidays. And Ross as well, absolutely remembering when it came down to Earth. Merry Christmas. Yep, amen. Yeah, when Yeshua came down. Exactly, exactly. So my guest tonight is someone who is living a lot of the issue that's been happening this person is someone who i've known for some years it was really powerful to see some of her testimonies her stories and we really are re really are keen and eager to have a bit of a corridor with her tonight i'd love for you to to join me and welcome sarah tahere sarah Hi, Tenakwe. Tenakwe, Elliot. Tenakwe. Tenakwe, everybody nice to be here thank you for having me 
Awesome, awesome. Now look, I'm also part of the Talano Asao crew, so just a shout out to them, we'll be having a very special, another special episode tomorrow night, and the way in which we start Talano Asao, I'd love for us to start here, and that is of course a bit of a karakia, a bit of a prayer, and then we can jump in. So, dear Lord, thank you so much for tonight, thank you so much for the gift of breath itself that we can come together and to discuss and share information and knowledge understandings words opinions that we might have so thank you lord for every day that you've given us and also thank you for this free nation that we still are even if it's weakening a bit so thank you lord in jesus name amen, amen. awesome so sarah we would love to hear from you your mihi where you're where you're from and and then we can get started hardcore Awesome. Kia ora koutou katoa everybody. Ko tararua te baunga. Ko ngā te raukawa. Um, tōku ingoa. Uh, sorry, tōku iwi. Uh, ko Otaki um, is where my whanau is from. Uh, and yeah, my name is Sarah Tahere. I am a mother of three uh, young men. So my youngest is 19 and my eldest is 23. Uh, so yeah, so I've I've looked after hundreds of kids as well um, with the United Māori Mission and the Zone Project, um, and been in the education sector for quite a number of years. Um, so with Māori Pacifica um, kids, that's my heart and my passion. Um, so yeah, so I've just recently uh, established a theatre company called Toy Toy Collective, where we start uh, where we tell stories of New Zealand history. Uh, so that you know our people can tell their stories uh, and others can come forward and, and share their stories the way that they they feel need to be told so yeah so that's just a little bit about me uh, but it's great to be here thank you for having me uh, awesome oh yeah that, that's quite awesome actually geez toy toy collective Whee! so yeah so before we get stuck into some of the more harder stuff the the toy toy collective mm, First off, I forgot that you were Otaki. <laughs> yeah, course, yeah, yeah, I forgot. Yes. I forgot that because yeah, of course I'm Ngati Rokawa, and that's of course uh, uh, from Otaki area, so that's that's yes. pretty choice. <laughs> uh, awesome. is, there, is there any work that you've done so far with the Toy Toy Collective? Yes, so uh, we, I was a part of directing a musical called uh, The Way of the Rokura, uh, which was a telling a story of the invasion of Parihaka. Um, back in the 1800s, 1881. Uh, so it was um, the story that led up to the invasion of Parihaka and the culture at the time. Um, some of the things that, um, I guess, some of the undesirable things that went on behind the scenes at governance level um, that, you know, it, it is really only just coming to light now for a lot of people. So when we, 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 First showed, um, first did our performance last year in November 5th, and we went for about eight nights. Um, but the response from uh, the audience across the board, not just Māori, in fact, 80% of our audience were non-Māori, uh, and were just absolutely flabbergasted by um, the fact that they didn't know the story, that they knew nothing about it. Um, some of them were a bit embarrassed. It wasn't about embarrassing anybody. It was more just about telling the truth, bringing the truth to light um, in a way that was non, I guess it was non-abrasive. It was a musical, mm. you know? um, And so it was, yeah, it was a beautiful thing to be a part of um, and to bring understanding between cultures. Um, and for Māori, there was some healing in that too for a lot of the Māori in the cast. Um, to be understood, to be heard, to be seen. Uh, it was very, very powerful. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, awesome. Awesome stuff. Right. So, so th thank you so much for that, Sarah. Uh, wonderful, wonderful mihi that you've got in there. Definitely some good stuff. And I think it's quite exciting. I can't wait. When I do see Toy Toy come up, I think it'll be good. We might we might do a little bit of uh, marketing ourselves, promoting that sort of stuff. Yes. So I, I love that. I always love having a bit of a corridor back and forth. We have that quite a bit on this show. <laughs> Sure. We have some warm discussions, warm discussions. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, but tonight, I, I think it's really important. I've noticed some things that have been going on in your own social media account and and some of it concerns someone else that I have a lot of love and respect for. Could you tell us what's been going on within your whānau uh, lately? And, and yeah, what's what's been going on? What's happened? Yeah, well, my husband's really unwell. 
at the moment. So he's been unwell for five weeks now. Um, he he went for his first vaccination. Um, he was a little bit apprehensive. Um, he wanted to know more about the vaccination before he took the vaccination. Um, he's a school teacher. So um, he fell under the category of mandatory vaccinations. Um, neither of us are anti-vax. You know, we've, we've always believed in vaccinations, that that's not the problem. Um, and that's not the stance that we took, you know, prior to this um, to this meeting and still not, you know, um, I, I think, um, yeah, but I, he took his first vaccination um, and five minutes after uh, he received his vaccination, he he got like an electric shock through his heart and it, and he five screamed minutes. five minutes. So we were still sitting in the car park, but he didn't, um, there was no, the, the person who gave him his injection didn't ask whether he um, gave consent. Um, they didn't give him any um, information about uh, the side effects from from the vaccination. When we went to sit in the car park, nobody came to the car to tell us what we needed to do. Um, I knew what to do in the car mm. because I had been. I, I I had that was my second vaccination, so I knew that you know um, that normally they'd come to the car and say, "Look, if something goes wrong, please." flash your lights and beep your horn um but nobody came to the vehicle to say anything. so so you're you're saying that you turned up to the clinic or the doctor or whatever the area was that they yeah. did not give you any sort of uh, time to be able to ask questions or even any documentation to suggest what some side effects might be is that correct no, no absolutely nothing um in fact my husband when he we pulled up there was a nurse that met him so we went to a drive through so it was a drive through vaccination center. Um, and the nurse that came to the window, um, Mark just shared his concerns about the vaccine. Like he just said, you know, I'm a, doc I'm a teacher. So I just actually wanted a little bit more time to research. You know, I, I um, and the nurse said, well, you're here. At least you're not going to die now. You know, and so my husband. So he, he even asked, he actually, he actually put out his hand and verbally asked for, for some dialogue about the vaccination. Yeah, he, he wanted, I think, you know, I mean, my husband's pretty straight up, right? And he um, he was just trying to be transparent about his concerns um, in that moment. And it was met with kind of like, it, to him, it felt like it was kind of just brushed over and it was just like, well, you're not going to die now. And so Mark just felt like, well, well what are we immortal now? <laughs> you know, we get a vaccine and we're immortal. Um, so he just thought that was a funny thing to say to somebody who was a little bit concerned about, um, yeah about doing this so that's yeah. that I, I have to say that's that's shocking actually yeah. you know to, i mean we, we're not even you, you've just turned up and we are seeing constantly across the media and all the politicians saying yeah everyone's going to be told you're going to have a lot of knowledge being given please yeah no worries you just ask any of us and we've got it sussed you know we'll, yeah. we'll have it knowledgeable so i, well, I, I find that quite fascinating well yeah, I can be honest and say when I went the first time, they did that. They did that. So I knew what to expect, you know, but they didn't do it that time. And so right. it may have just been an, an anomaly. I don't know. But I, I, I have experienced the process. And, mm. and the first time the nurse said to me, do, are you happy to give consent? And I didn't respond. This was for me personally on my first time. And she said, okay, I see. I, do you give consent? And I said, yes, I do. So I, I know that they need to ask for consent. And they didn't do that for him. They didn't do that. Was this his first or second shot? His first, yeah. His first shot? His first shot, yeah. Right. So then, right. So he's had the shot. You guys are in the car. Five minutes goes by, and then then what happens? Um, and he has this this what felt like an electric shock through his heart, and so it was a split second, but it was enough for him to you know kind of belt out. You know, uh, he was he yelled. You know, right. Um, so I said, "Oh, you know, are you all right?" And he goes, "Oh," he said, "Man, that that was a bit weird." And I said, um, "You know, maybe maybe you should talk to the the ladies." over there you know and he said oh he goes i think i think it might be all right you know he goes it's gone now he said it was like an instant and then it was gone as if it never happened and i think in hindsight you know i think you know maybe we should have <laughs> said something but we did quite quickly afterwards because it just kept going so um every hour after that 
um, the pains just kept coming more frequently, um, more um, sharply, um, the pain levels became intolerable. So we had to call Healthline. Yeah. And that was so right. So every but once an hour again, bang in the heart, bang in the heart. Then you eventually called Healthline. Healthline. And what yeah. happened at that stage? Uh, so how we, the Healthline were really helpful. They, they sat on the line for quite um, quite some time, um, talking through um, you know the process with Mark, and just said, "Look, this isn't something that you know that." Uh, you should sit on like I, I think you should definitely go and see your GP or if it gets worse um go to the to the hospital like you know make sure you go to the hospital so um Mark sat on it and it got worse so what I did was I began to write down the frequency and the level and nice. what you know the pain level um so he was having about four sharp stabbing pains by that stage um by the monday morning he was having about four sharp pains level eight and then there was you know it was quite a you know terrible pain um and he there was like a, a kind of not murmuring but he said it's like this pain that just sits it, it just stays there like a three or a four you know level three or a four but then there's stabbing every sort of five or six times an hour so wow yeah. Wow. Uh, and so if that was on the Monday, when did he have the first vaccination? When did he have that injection? Well, he had his first vaccination on Saturday morning. Saturday so, morning. Uh, yeah. So gradually, oh, sorry. Yeah, Saturday morning. And then it sort of started continuing on every hour. So we rang uh, Healthline on Sunday, you know, because mm, it wasn't getting right. better. It wasn't going away. So um, Healthline said, if it gets worse, go to the hospital, but definitely go and see your GP in the morning if you can tolerate okay it. so so monday morning comes along and you decide that you need to head to to the doctor or to ed so we rang the doctor um and the doctor said go to ed so we went to ed because he was just like this is you know this is not normal actually we didn't we rang the doctor but we got the nurse and the nurse said go straight to the hospital this is nice. not normal um so we went to the hospital on monday um and had ecgs uh, blood tests, uh, but you know, I what I found very interesting was we turned up to the hospital. He was rushed in because it was heart pains or, or chest pain, sorry. Um, and we get into ED, and the nurses are sort of um, fiddling around with the ECG. And a doctor came in, and he was he was really sh quite stressed. Like he was just like, "Why is he in here? Why is he not in another?" And so it was almost like there was an urgency. Oh, like he, right, he right. Realized there was urgency but he, it's, you know the nurses were like well we're just going to do the ECG and then you know we can move him through um the doctor went away and came back five minutes later and said oh it's vaccine related just leave him in here put the ECG on him let it run for a little bit and then we'll we'll check in on him later and so I just thought uh, to, I was kind of sitting there thinking that's such a strange response like you know yeah. it's, uh, that it's less important because it was vaccine related possibly mm. like you know um i could have got it wrong because i was really concerned about mark but that's what i saw and that's what i heard um he went from this sort of quite frustrated stressed doctor to very calm leave him in here it's vaccine related um, put the ecg on him uh, we'll run some bloods and we'll check in check in on him later so so, um, so just to i mean and i know this is subjective did it seem like to you that this was something that had been occurring a little bit more frequently, so he was sort of already half expecting or thinking that, yeah, these things happen, or, or that this particular uh, one? It's hard to say. Like, I, I, I kind of felt like, um, like it, because it was, yeah, because it was vaccine-related, I don't know how many more people. Actually, yeah, then I'll tell you about the next visit, which was very soon after. But it felt like he was just kind of like, well, it's it's – yeah, it's probably more common than we think. We'll just kind of do the obvious tests, make sure he's, you know, his heart's okay. Uh, but I didn't really think about it at the time, apart from I just mm. thought, yeah, it's quite a strange thing to yeah. say, you know. Um, and then the whole atmosphere in the room changed because he was just kind of like settled and calm. And um, But they did the ECG the first time and the nurses looked really confused. <laughs> they were looking at the ECG and they were just like, you know talking and whispering and and they turned around to mark and they said have you got a phone in your pocket 
And Mark said, no. And I said, no, his phones are over here. You know, I've got his phones. It's and they were quite what oh. you want to hear. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh, okay. And they're like, it's a, it's, that's fine. And then they did another test. They did another ECG, picked up the gear and just left. So, I mean, you know what? They're in, uh, you know, I think we trust people, you know, like, and I'm really trusting. I, I trusted that they knew what they were doing. And, I, you know, I, I like to think that I still do. Um, but, I, I, yeah, I didn't ask the questions I should have. You know, like, I really think, looking back, I should have said, why would – you know, was there electrical interference in his in his um, report? Like, you know, why are you asking whether he's got cell phones on him? Um, it wasn't until I called a, my sister, who's a nurse, and she said, oh, sometimes, um, sometimes there's electrical interference and that's due to the machine itself, but they were probably just clearing, you know, the probability. But, yeah, so lots mm. of weird things were happening on the first visit, and I didn't ask enough questions. Um, but we went back the next day. <laughs> Because it got so worse. they they discharged you. So they they did the ECG, they put on mark, then they wrapped things up. They left, and then you were just what told to. Yeah. What, so the doctor leave. came. Yeah, the doctor came back in and said, "Look, the ECGs are fine. The bloods are fine. Uh, we can't find anything." Um, they said, "We don't believe it's vaccine related," um, and they said that um, it's not his heart. So they said, "What we can tell you is his heart is fine. There's no damage to the heart." Um, it's not a life or death situation. We're going to give him some ibuprofen and we'll discharge him. If it gets worse, come back. So that's... I'll take two pills and call us in the morning. Yeah. But by the yeah. way, was that your phone? Okay. No, that's... <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. Yeah, that's right. All right. So so that night, so how was he that night? Any change, any improvement? Oh, it just got worse and worse. The ibuprofen didn't do anything. He... he um, yeah, the frequency got worse, uh, and and I was still recording. You know, I was recording the pain, the frequency, and I just said to Mark the next day, I said, "That's it. Like, we need to go back and ask those questions." And and also because I had talked to a lot of family members <laughs> between that time, and they were really frustrated with me about what had happened and why I hadn't asked the questions then. So um, I said, "Okay, we'll we'll go back and we'll ask the questions," um, because I was still really confused. They didn't tell us mm. what was happening what was wrong they just said it's not his heart but you know for us it was like well what is it <laughs> you know well, yeah. what is it yeah it, it doesn't us? magically come out of nowhere yeah that's right so we went back to the hospital um and they ran double tests so they did um hours and hours of testing um ecgs double bloods um every kind of blood that they could think of to try and see whether there was anything wrong with his heart um I just, yeah, I through the whole process, I just felt like they were just very dismissive of him because he had come in and said it had happened straight after the vaccine. You know, like there was just this, um, it's not likely linked to the vaccine. We don't think it's linked to the vaccine. And, you know, I mean, I'm not a doctor, so I, I don't know. But I do know there's a strong probability when it happened five minutes after the vaccine was, you know, was administered. So... You know, just it's hard for me to think otherwise. <laughs> hmm. You know, so um, I, uh, cho choose whether you want to choose carefully as to whether you want to answer this or not. Okay. Yeah, I'm curious to know which DHB, which hospital it was, but don't feel like you have to answer hmm. that one. Um, I will say I'm... Auckland. I will say, Auckland, say Auckland, but I I will also say this that um, we we've been there three times now okay and the care has actually been really really good apart from that first incident with with um the doctor just coming across like it wasn't as urgent because it was possibly vaccine related um mm. that that kind of threw me off a lot um but the majority of the care that had been well yeah care after that was really really good um what i did noticed though um that was consistent as they didn't know they didn't know what was wrong they still don't know what's wrong and um they there's kind of like a point where they'll say well your heart's fine your heart's not damaged you're not going to have a heart attack you don't have blood clots so you know and then they kind of wipe their hands and it's like well can't we figure out what's wrong because it's not so normal so we're talking, so this is, when you say Saturday, do you mean Saturday just gone? You're talking about Saturday. Sorry. 
Yeah, no. Oh, so we, the last hospital visit was Wednesday, uh, Tuesday night, but he had his vaccine five weeks ago. So he's been suffering for five weeks. And it's so this is, worse. whoa, so you're talking about, so five weeks ago, he was in pain with feelings of shock through the heart. They ECG'd him. They gave him a couple of pills to take away, did nothing. Next day, still onwards and onwards, still nothing, still a great deal of pain. And this was five weeks ago. Five weeks ago. And you just said, you just said about a couple of, a few sentences ago, you said they still don't know what's wrong. They still don't know. So the last visit, um, you know, because I'm, I'm really frustrated. Like Mark is really unwell. I mean, he's otherwise um, very alive and very, um, you know, he likes to, get up and about um, and do things and visit people. He's social, um, but he can't do those simple things. So I'm I'm frustrated for him. You know, he can't even work. Like the doctor gave him the rest of the year off. He couldn't teach. Um, he did, limited his, his classes to six hours a week. He thought I can manage six hours of Zoom class a week. He couldn't even do that. You know, he couldn't even teach a 20 minute session without sleeping for four hours afterwards. He is absolutely, shattered so the last visit the doctor didn't know and i could see it on his face and he said that he's never seen this before that's what he said he said he's never experienced this before he doesn't know what he's looking at he doesn't know what to say um but when he released us um you know i thought to myself you know i, I guess it makes sense because it's a new vaccine you know like um the problem is they should be considering every effect, <laughs> every reaction as, as serious. Like, you know, not just go, well, we don't know what it is, so just go. Like, test and test and test until you know what's wrong, you know, because mm. it's not really offering us any assurance, you know, or any faith in, in the hospital or the process or, you know. Um, but he rang back. He rang us about four hours after we had been discharged, and he just said, look, I can't stop thinking about this i want to know what it is and i i you know he said can can you do some more bloods because i think i might know you know um and i really want to try so for us that was hope you know for us that was like cool he's not giving up you know he's not just sending us away and you know adios you know so um we're waiting now on the bloods to see what what the results are i i find it extraordinary that this has been going on for five weeks and if I'm hearing correctly, you'll say that they're still not looking at this as a vaccine reaction. They're not. Um, I can't believe it. I, I mean, that seems near, that's extraordinary that they yeah. would not be, I have to say five weeks. How are you, well, how are you, how are the family holding up through that this time? I have, I have seen some of your pics, pictures. Yeah, yeah. It's so hard. It is so hard. Um, you know, I thank God that, um, you know, I, I finished up at my job earlier in the year. I'm, I'm now studying my MBA and I've started my own business in the theatre company. But um, I just thank God that I have the time because he needs, because we don't know what this is and because it's related to his chest or, you know, they say it's his chest, but, you know, his heart area, I, I'm afraid to leave him alone. You know, um, so the drugs that they're giving him is making him, really unwell you know anxious and depressed um and you know mark you know he's not anxious yeah. he's not an anxious but person it's you are saying things that are the opposite that i that yes, i know him absolute as. Opposite. he is so confident he's an amazing teacher um he's just not the person that he he was prior to the vaccine um and so we just yeah it's it's been difficult on me you know but i think uh, God's given me the grace to carry this for this season. And I actually feel really strongly that I am here to be a voice for him and everybody else who is not being heard because it's not good enough. It's it's absolutely not good enough that there are people like my husband and there are thousands of people that we know who are exactly in the, sa in the same position as my husband. Um, and it, it's, it's really hard. It's a, it's a, massive pressure on our on our family and it and it takes as a man you know he can't 
he can't do anything. He can't help around the house. He can't drive a car. He can't, you know, he, he gets up for probably two hours a day. You know, he can't walk to the letterbox, you know, um, without feeling like he's going to pass out. Um, he'll black out for 10 minutes at a time and won't know what's going on. You know, he's forgetful. Um, these electric shocks that go from his chest to his arm, to his back, to his stomach, like um, excruciating and no painkillers. He doesn't respond to any painkillers. It's almost like his nerves are, are non-responsive to the strongest painkillers, you know? Um, and so it's just, yeah, it's heartbreaking. You know, I spend, I spend a lot of time crying you know, on my, mm. on my own, because I don't want to make him feel bad, you know, yeah. for, yeah. for um, this, this is not his fault, you know? Mm. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. So I, because I'm helpless, like, what do I do? You know, like doctors don't even know what to do. So what, what, what do I do? You know? So my goal is to just love him and protect him and fight for him. Um, and yeah, do all that I can in this space in our home, um, to make sure that he's comfortable and well taken care of. Oh, I think you're doing a bloody good job with that. So oh, you're well done you. on that, <laughs> that area. Uh, so I know that you guys, I know that you'd be, you'd be generally pro-vaccine, you know, measles, chicken pox, whatever, whatever. Yeah, so, so tell me about your own journey since, you know, since five weeks ago where things would have been, yeah, hey, jab up hard, you know, da-da-da, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. What's happened with your own journey in that space of you know are you now for the kids i mean the kids now will be the government's now going to start pushing children to be vaxxed from halfway through next next month yeah. onwards so you know what are your thoughts about this now especially in terms of that journey five weeks ago i i am very very concerned for our kids, you know, I, I, you know, I work with kids. That's what I do. You know, um, they are our future leaders, and I think it's, um, I don't think it's responsible <laughs> to be um, putting this whatever it is, you know, um, into their bodies. We've, I know firsthand the effects. I know what can happen. Um, I. Yeah, I I am really really torn. I'm I'm gonna fight, you know. I'm gonna fight, and I'm gonna let people know that these are some of the effects um, of the the vaccine that they're not talking about. Um, so please be informed before you mm. put this in your child's body, you know, because honestly, um, the pain level for Mark, he's a man, you know, he can't bear it, you know. And if there's no pain relief that can help a fully grown man you know why would we want to do this to our babies like i don't i don't understand the logic oh, well you know to, to a lot of new zealanders this doesn't exist this isn't real you know it doesn't happen in their world so it doesn't exist and the media isn't talking about it so it's not real you know it's false news it's fake news it's not and i my fear is that there are re there are a whole bunch of unassuming parents who don't know and their child is going to be impacted in this way and it's going to t t turn their whole life upside down and and mm. destroy that kid, you know, because they're going to be on drugs. I mean, look, at the end of the day, the doctor said this, you know, this condition may never heal. You know, um, they, they, they're they saying it's an Jeez. inflamed chest wall. Like they're saying it's an inflamed cartilage between the rib cage. That's what they're saying. Um, and that it's actually common, and I'm like, okay, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, sure, five but, minutes after the jab, yeah, yeah. You know, but they're saying that um, if he doesn't get adequate rest, um, because it, mm. it requires him to rest, he can't even breathe properly, um, because when he breathes, it hurts too much. And so he's breathing like, you know, he's taking gas, like he's like, <laughs> you know, like to try and get enough oxygen into his body, you know, and so... Um, I just, I just think to myself, my gosh, this, yeah, this, uh, I am terribly concerned and I'm, I'm willing to stand up and fight with, with whoever, you know, if there are parents that are like, absolutely no, you know, I'm not happy about my child getting this vaccine. I'm willing to stand, you know, on the front line with them and, and just saying, you know, I, they have every right. <laughs>
<laughs> every right you know and i uh, i do recall that you have you have even put up a little bit of so this is just something that uh, that i found on your your area quite uh, yes. i believe that was yesterday and you've put these up and yes. you, you know you've done you've done the good thing you, you've hidden the names in your but you've been putting these things up which are showing that people as well are trying to get their message out there to to the people of New Zealand. Yes. And it's just extraordinary that that the media that we have just seem to be not wanting to have a bar of it. They they want to give a, a couple of token articles that way, but it's filled with justification and hey, hey, but it's no, don't worry, it's all good, it's all good. Yeah. How yeah. has your I'm curious now I mean, you know, you know my position. You know, I'm quite, uh, I'm pretty much just quite suspicious now of the entire <laughs> media that we have. Yeah. What is your, what's your position on the mainstream media of New Zealand? The the fact that they used to be, of course, the reporters of fact and truth. What are your thoughts since that whole thing fifteen weeks ago, uh, five weeks ago? Sorry. Yeah, it's it's heartbreaking because they used to represent us. You know, they used to represent our voice. I've reached out to a number of reporters um, to right, try to right. get some of our stories out, and I haven't had any responses. Um, I'm believing that the right people will connect with me soon. You know, um, there's so, no... So I'm just, I mean, that's massive. You're saying that you have approached journalists of media companies and they are refusing to engage back with you on a, on a story that New Zealand needs to hear. Yeah, well, I don't know if they're refusing, but they're not responding. <laughs> they're definitely not responding. So, um, you know, yeah, it, it's definitely, it's devastating. And, you know, so we've we've got plans to try and get around it another way because there's, like I said, there's, there's thousands of people like the stories that I just showed um, and I'm going to keep posting them until somebody listens or until I get shut down and I have to find another avenue. But, um yeah, there's thousands of people that aren't being heard. They really want to be heard. We just don't know how. Um, I have been approached by a big organisation that are happy to support, so that was quite recent. Um, and so, yeah, so we're just wanting to um, find somebody who's wanting to tell our, you know, tell the truth, not our, even our truth, just the actual truth, you know, mm. um, that people are being really hurt. We do know, of course, that Linda Farton, who's part of the she's setting up she's got a health committee with a new calm team over there they've been detailing as you say thousands of reports and they are documenting them they're checking crossing their t's dotting their i's to make sure that everything's awesome. strong and nice and i think that's a wonderful thing that's going on yeah. it's quite extraordinary to hear you talk about that you've you've sent messages out to journalists who should be hungry for a story and yet they're yeah. not they are not engaging it, it's uh, I have to say it's extraordinary. Not that surprising these days, but still, you just you just don't think that they'll do this sort of thing. No, um, so know, now, good. now, of course, in this heavily progressive world, you also are intersectional, which means that you've got all the the left leftist points, <laughs> Maori, female, <laughs> you know, or if you're if you're uh, gender binary or whatever you know these days uh, the, yeah. how do you feel about the fact that the government is basically putting the eyesights into maori and pacifica but mostly maori first they, they are gunning for maori kids children to be vaccinated first and they're putting it under the guise or rather they're, they're asserting it's for equity reasons yeah i think that's that's it's a real tough one. You know, my personal opinion is, um, you know, it's it's disgusting if they're not going to sit with the iwi first and discuss this, you know, if it's not. And because I, I can't speak on behalf of all iwi, but I, you know, for myself personally with my babies, like I can't imagine they'd want their kids to be at the front of the line for a vaccine that's still under trial, you know, as far as I'm aware, you know. Um, and so... Yeah, I, I, it frightens me. It frightens me because we don't know how this vaccine is going to respond to our kids. You know, we we also do know, of course, that uh, I believe the first school that they went for happened to be a school very close to the Beehive, uh, Māori school, of course, and that they they were promoted with fifty points. 
So you had 50 points. You got 50 points if you decide to take a jab. Now that was from, I believe, the 13-year-olds and up. And there was very little discourse with the parents. They, I think one random newsletter was sent out. And then after that, basically, the kids were given 50 points, 50 house points if they managed to get in. How would a school... Also, we've sent out, we've had reports, multiple reports, that they were given fifty dollars vouchers, and that was actually from the the Iwi Trust itself. And so they they asked if they could be put outside the school. That was that was given to them, and then when they did that, they basically offered fifty dollars. Now we're getting reports of that, as uh-huh. well as children deciding to go for multiple jabs so they can get multiple fifty dollar amounts. So, how do you feel about the fact that also iwi, hapu, or whatever, the, the trusts themselves, some of them are taking that state money and then encouraging their their tamariki, but it seems to be, and now I don't, I know enough to know that that was happening in Hawaii school, from what I understand, the parents or the whanau were not that pushed in terms of being able to have a korero with them, with the family themselves to, to take it. Rather, if you're of the age of 13, then you can take the jab and your, your parents have no right to know. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Absolutely unacceptable if the parents weren't, weren't involved in that decision. That's despicable. That's, that's not acceptable at all. That's, that's um, yeah, that, that's a breach in terms of um, even tiriti. You know, like it's, it's breach because there's, there's no partnership in that. You can't just go to a kid and go, you know, you know here you go you can have 50 bucks if you get a jab like you know and don't worry about your parents like no no that's not the way we we do things you know yeah we, and i agree things. i agree with that but i can see that they could argue that it was done in partnership because of the fact that it is is very likely state funding that's been given to them so that they can uh, utilize that we've got i do know that we've that a couple of the barber shops in South Auckland were given an offer of state fund or state money to pay for merchandise so that they could continue some of the incentives for vaccinations. And two of those barber shops said no because of their own concerns around it as well. They refused tens of thousands of state funding for that. Uh, but I, yeah. I wonder, the, the argument could be made that, hey, we are doing it with partnership uh, with, with government. There's a lot of undercover things going on. I mean, if a child can't even go on a trip without a parent's signature, why on the earth are they allowed to get a vaccine? You know, like that, that makes no sense at all. But I guess, you know, in the last two years, a lot of things have been done that don't make sense at all, you know. And we're living in a really scary time, you know. And I think more than ever, we need to stand up and protect our kids, you know, because if we don't, who will? You know, if we're not standing between them and these strange laws or legislation, whatever it is, us and them, you know, if we're not standing in front of our children trying to protect them, no one will. No one yes. will. No, well said. Yeah. yeah, well said on that one. Uh, I just wanted to also show, hey, look, guys, thank you so much for those comments that are coming in. See really awesome ones in there as well. I just wanted to bring up one that, that really felt really nice. Um, uh, let's have a look. Oh. Some really nice ones in there. Leone, a lot of them don't admit that it's vaccine related if it's after the 20 minute time frame. Our nurse we saw on second admission for my son was basically in tears treating us and saying that they have seen so many young fit people in with the same symptoms. Yeah. Now I, I want to I want to actually add to that because it does seem to be that this is this is anecdotal from what I've looked at, but you've got triathlon teams, swimmers, rugby players, basketballers all falling over in the fields or the courts that they are suffering they are suffering greatly from the adverse reactions and it tends to be around that heart issue. Now if that is the case and you've got a child who's been given the Pfizer shot, are you going to tell them that for two weeks, you, they are not allowed to actually move on. A, a five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten year old. Are you going to be able to tell them to say, no, for the next two weeks you don't move anywhere. We mm-hmm. don't want your heart to be increasing up to a certain amount or beyond a certain amount. Uh, and I, I think that's incredibly, incredibly bad. We've also got Kelly here. Heartbreaking for you and your family. So I think, thank you so much, Kelly. I think that was, that was really awesome. Uh, people having to take this to keep their jobs. Uh, that's absolutely right. And Mark, Mark is a school teacher mark yes. is and, and may i just may i just put in there because i know that some people sometimes get this feeling when there's hey you know what i'll say when there's maori involved they think oh they're the kapahaka teacher 
let me put it this way. <laughs> Mark, Mark is a mathematics teacher. He is one of the greatest teachers I've ever come across. He does he does kapahaka as well on top of that. He does worship as well on that. He But his main focus is math. And I've watched him just strengthen young people so well. And where he's placed, he is needed. You know, we, we need this guy up there into the school that he's in. We need him in there because he saves lives as well. Uh, I can't say too much more than that, but that's exactly what's happening there. So you know, some wonderful comments coming in. Uh, uh, thank you so much about it. There's a, there's a question here, Sarah, from Darren. Are you worried about suffering any adverse effects? I assume yourself, Sarah. What do you think? Um, you know, I, I'm a woman of faith, so I took it to God in prayer straight away. You know, we both did. You know, um, I had peace about it and I felt confident that I could go through. So I'm double vaxxed. So I went to have my second vax when he had his first, right? Um, but he didn't have peace about it. But he had to take it in order to keep his job. He had a, a time frame. I think it was the 15th of November. He had to have it done by then, otherwise he wasn't able to come, you know, he wasn't able to come back to school or teach online. So same thing's happening now. He's he's got until the first of January to get his vaccine or or get an exemption. So um, so, the, otherwise... so the mRNA, the, the mRNA vaccines, of course, is actually a, a newish technology for inserting and for dealing with the issues that the vaccines are supposedly to take. Novavax, which is of course the one that Mayor Gold Sandra Godi will take. That one is based off the old technology. T tried, tested, true, all the good stuff there. If you if you knew about the adverse reactions, the accurate ones that Pfizer have been pushed have been forced to give out to the people, would you have chosen to hold off or would you have just taken it anyway? Or, or, or would you have gone for Novavax if, if possible? Um, I, I actually did a lot of research and I knew about a lot of the effects. Um, I was sent a documentation um, by a friend, uh, which were the actual you know outcomes of the trials by Pfizer. So I had a really good look through. It didn't look good, uh, which is why I prayed. I went straight to my knees and I was just like, if this is me then give me peace about it you know and so i got peace it was very very clear and so i was like okay i'm gonna do it um at the same time mark was like well i, I don't have the peace yet but i'll you know um and we were happy to just me go and get mine and him just wait on it because i don't think it's a decision that people should have to rush like it's mm. a, it's quite big it's a it's a trial vaccine <laughs> you know like i'm just thinking that's a bit crazy that you should be forced to you, you get a date otherwise you lose your job like you know i just think yeah that's a bit extraordinary eh? it's Very just it, it's extraordinary that this is happening in our time and now in our land yeah. uh yeah. i just wanted to show this up here i just wanted to pop this up here this of course is one of the articles that we've had we had one of our reporters actually go out one of our journalists went out there and had a look at these things this is what's going on out there right so so the brown people obviously weren't doing enough for the government to be satisfied so they started to jump through there and put it you know the newer drive through covid vax you can get free vouchers free laptops or lotto areas this has of course been very much pushed in west and south auckland they had the mega vax pacific you know, free food, free money, Warriors, rugby ball. They even put out period pads. You know, uh, uh, Esther Tolefo was the organizer for that one. You know, they're very strong about wanting to push it, push it, push it. Very focused on the brown people, which yeah. uh, it does make me quite, I feel a little bit yuck about that. I think it's, yeah, it's, it is quite problematic. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, we've had multiple times in there. And again, free food, free pies, you know, free KFC. It's, what are we, what are we? If we, I mean, what, we just give us free food and then we'll just do whatever you want us to do? I, I find it really yuck. Um, and there was, our, our journalist was also able to discover that uh, overseas they found one where you get million dollars for lotto, but there's also one with a brothel. A, you can give prostitutes for 30 minutes. Wow. Which was just they're, a, desperate, a, just... they're really desperate to get people vaccinated. It's like well, they oh, are, wow. yeah, and it's it's very much and it does appear to be in a very unhealthy way, as well. Yeah. I I noticed that there's a real unhealthy push. Like, they didn't do this with mm. Ebola. They didn't do this. They didn't do yeah. this with measles. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's even right. with the you know you, you look at the fact that that Labour allowed the vaccination rates to drop down to what sub seventy percent or so, but they they yeah. didn't do this sort of thing. Mm, uh, I find it right. extraordinary. Uh, and of course, you know, as you and I have just discussed, it's brown people that they're aiming for, and now brown kids that they're aiming for. Uh, uh, the vaccination mandates, which you just brought up, I mean, how how do you perceive things? How do you think this is going to affect? I tell you what, Toy Toy Collective, you yes. you are you are a theatre, right? So there are going to be rules around you. Are there going to be rules? What is what's the law there around your own things? Uh, well, at the moment, uh, we can't uh, do theatre because some of our cast members are, are not getting vaccinated. They're not anti-vax. They just choose not to have this vac vaccine. Um, and some of them are our lead character, you know, lead characters, <laughs> lead roles. So what we've done is we've actually put um, the, the theatre uh, or the show on hold. Uh, because we were hoping and believing that things would settle down because there was so much hatred you know um, being expressed and we just for me and the other directors it was wasn't we didn't you know we wanted things to settle down because in our theater the show we do is about you know is about trying to bring understanding between people and we can't say sorry you you're not part of this um, because you're not vaccinated and, and you can be a part of it because you are that that's not who we you know, it's not what we stand for. So um, shows um, in the in the red light, we couldn't practice. You know, in the orange light, there were limited numbers. Um, if we try and mix up a show with non-vaxxed and vaxxed, then we will barely fill, you know, three rows of the theatre. Um, so, yeah, we're looking at alternative options about how we present the show. Um, and some of it is looking like um, perhaps more television series. Um, as opposed to theatre until we're able to get into the theatre um, and and yeah, do the show. So it's throwing everything, actually. So we were supposed to do a um, show in March in Taranaki, um, mm. but, it's, yeah, it's been postponed until we're able to sort of figure out our way around this confusing system. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I know that John Campbell and Commissioner Ming Foon of the Human Rights Commission that they got together and the Ming Foon advised that he was doing a dial it down campaign. One where they, they were purporting that it was being done because there was a lot of hatred. Uh, racial rhetoric was actually the big one that they kept pushing. But that there was a lot of hatred being spilled out there. And their narrative was that it's coming from those guys who are the Kiwis who are anti-mandate. Those who are wanting do not want segregation don't want discrimination they want mm -hmm. people to be more of them they don't want people to be forced out of jobs the whole coercion aspect so yes. ming foon and john campbell were on the show saying that it's actually coming from the, the narrative was that it's coming from there how do you feel about that do you think that there's there is a rage underneath the surface and that the that it's an unfair rage coming from from the the people who are anti-mandate people Oh, you know, there's so much confusion in the media and so much emotion, like there's heightened fear, heightened, um, you know, the, the stories are uh, sensationalised there, you know, there, there is a real sense of um, uh, ca catastrophizing, <laughs> you know, and so I think yep. there is rage, but I think it's from both sides. And I think, you know... It, Everybody, I think at the end of the day, people are just grasping for straws and, and they're, they're turning in to protect themselves and that's projecting this fear on others. And, you know, I don't know whether that answers the question. All I know is that we're in a terribly confused nation at the moment and people are responding um, with anger, you know, and they're taking it out on the wrong people, you know. Um, they're taking it out on each other, their families, um, and it's yeah, yep. see. Yep, no, well said very well said I, I do notice that the there seems to be real division in families and whanau and ainga and that you've got parents saying no you can't kid, say come to the kids and grandparents yeah. are not allowed to come see some it's, it's extraordinary the level yeah. of of oh gosh division that we've seen uh, yeah. 
for those of our audience, of course, you know that I, I'm very much, very, very believing that it's actually this government. Jacinda Ardern, I think, is, has ruined the word empathy, has ruined the word kindness by using it for her own devices. I, I think it's quite extraordinary. This, of course, here that we're looking at here is from the New Zealand Human Rights Commission. This is their, this is their dial it down a notch. And, and it's quite fascinating because when we saw that our the reporter te kahu the reporter there actually looked at the most 10 recent replies you know and in it it's just absolutely highly negative very negative towards the the new zealand human rights commission you know so it's like the the government departments themselves don't seem to be connected enough with new zealanders to to understand the depths of resentment and frustration and, and mental anguish that yes. is being being felt by normal New Zealanders. There seems yeah. to be this odd state address where people are just supposed to believe the uh, yes. they're just supposed to believe them, and it's just extraordinary. Mm. Um, I also do know that we also, I believe, Tikahu also had a look at the. Um, uh, he asked the Human Rights Commission themselves as to what's going on. He, they asked for clarification as to whether Ming Fu meant, because they were very much pushing the racism angle, that, you know, these guys are racist. Uh, it, it's like, hang on, the most non-vaccinated group in New Zealand happened to be Māori, if you're going to go to ethnicity. It's Māori. Yeah. So so first off, you're going to have to see if you can angle that way a little bit. Uh, yeah. But I, I just found it really fascinating. Uh, yeah. And here is his, he, he did an opinion, he did an op-ed today, and I thought that was actually quite good. Uh, and he, he did hang it. And what we what he what we found out what he was able to find out was this comes from the Human Rights Commission themselves, right? So the increase from two hundred to seven hundred complaints per week to HRC has included people exempt from wearing masks who are facing hostility when they attempt to access services, businesses with staff anxious about dealing with unmasked customers. Then there's people complaining strong language about the government response to the pandemic generally, uh, and people who haven't been vaccinated and are concerned about the impact. Now, that's obviously the segregations, the discriminations that are now mandatory, the no jab, no job. Uh, uh, so it's just it's just quite shocking to see. And I think for me, what was of most illuminating was that the HRC seemed to be having an increase in complaints to them from those who are suffering the government mandates and the government discriminations themselves. Yet the narrative remains that those are the people who should be guilty and be the pariah, and they're the ones why we need to have a dial it down Aotearoa. Uh, Sarah, how do you think we're going to go in the next year? You know, usually I like to say from election cycle to election cycle, but I don't I don't think we can say that. But do you have any thoughts about what's going to happen in the new year? I suppose in the new year, because of course that's when we open it up to children. And of yes. course after that will be the start of the infinite boost as well. I would say infinite boosters. Uh, yeah. How do you? What's your sense on the street? How do you think things are going to go over the next six months? I think we're going to see, um, and that, well, we may not see it, but there will be a massive increase on these types of injuries that my husband's suffering, and you know, from and many more. Um, I hope that they're not brushed under the rug like they have been. Um, I don't think you can brush it under the rug when it's children, and I really, I, I'm. I'm really uh, prayerful that that an army will be able to come together and stand for our children um, and try and make um, a, a difference, you know, because if we're not able to, there's going to be injuries in our children. Um, um, I believe there's going to be a big kickback with the kids. Um, I don't know whether we'll see that on mainstream media because they're only showing a small portion of the kickback um, and they're only showing what they want to show. Um, and... Uh, I think a lot of, um, you know, a lot of government agencies or, you know, schools, um, police forces, um, you know, hospitals, um, they're going to begin to see the weight of, of the mandate, um, you know, rule uh, with lots of people walking off jobs, you know, um, they're going to begin to see the gaps um, and it's going to become very, very evident. Uh, and I think, you know, um, while we're in the hospital, uh, the, the front 
counter um, at reception just outside our room, they were getting phone calls off the hook about people with heart problems, you know, problems in the chest, sore chest. So I have a sense that they're seeing a lot more people with with um, concerns like my husband um, than they're letting on, and they're probably going to be inundated with with those sorts of issues, you know, um, moving forward, um, especially going, you know, vaccinating our babies. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, well said, well said. Uh, Sarah, look, I think you've been incredibly brave with the last five weeks. I didn't realize it was five weeks. I think you've been incredibly brave also with coming on the show. Thank you so, so much there. We need to hear your voice because, um, I and I am sorry about this, but your experience helps us as a people to be stronger against what the government's doing and to allows us to know what's going on. So, so just mm-hmm. from bottom of my heart, thank you so much uh, for that. I, I can, I'm so sure there's some wonderful comments that have been coming through and I'm sure I speak for everyone. We say absolutely God bless and that I, we hope that Mark will make a full recovery. We expect him in there. We need him. The, the people actually need him. The kids definitely yes. need him. I've seen yeah. enough of him to know that. Uh, now, now I want to be in the prayer and I would love if you felt like you're okay to, to send us off with a bit of a karakia yourself. How do you feel about that? Yeah, absolutely. I'll do it in English so everyone can understand. Oi, oi, oi. Um, there we go. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you, Lord, for um, allowing um, these stories to come to the forefront. I pray that you will um, bless Elliot for giving um, us this platform to share these stories. And I pray uh, for those who are sick, with these symptoms that, Lord, you will be with their families, that you will heal them and that you'll give doctors wisdom to figure out um, what, what's at the, you know, um, what's causing these these issues and how to fix it. So, Lord, as we go, Father, I pray that th- this story in particular will continue to resonate, will continue to move, will con- continue to be heard um, and that our voices um, combined will be a very, very powerful force to be reckoned with. So we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And to all of you out there, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, We can't wait to be with you again. Stay tuned. As you know, you'll hear us give what we can give out here. We want to be a voice where, uh, you know, we're just not hearing the real what's going on out there. So until we see you again, God bless you and God bless New Zealand. Fast effort.